story to Frog Corpse and then let him write a poem about it? <laughs> How Probably. dope would that be, dude? Like, he would describe the flesh fucking <laughs> pulls in the bones. And like... Yeah, I'm telling you. Piece of the cat were still under there. <laughs> <laughs> and then it stunk so bad because it was rotten under there i mean i had to get bacon soda for days under there i kept throwing bacon soda bacon soda bacon soda i'm like oh my god this is horrifying and then there's some kind of, i did found out later there's some kind of law against throwing away a dead animal in the regular trash you're not allowed to do that yeah you don't want to throw in the dump you gotta bury them or you gotta take them to uh, like whatever animal control yeah, I didn't know that, but I just dumped it in a dumpster. Dumped in a trash can on a dumpster. <laughs> in a dumpster. Okay, right? Well, I could have said the thing went in the dumpster on its own and died there. <laughs> 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 then what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, so I want to share another poem, but I want you to share a poem first. And then I want my wife to share a Should poem. Should I share the one about the skunk? Yes, because we were talking about him. I want to hear. I got. It's it gonna now. take me a minute to find that one. Oh, hang on a minute. Right. And I'm not sure what. I gotta refill my water, anyways. It. Oh, yeah, I got it right here. That, cool. Last night, the skunks were really having a right. territorial... Are you ready? Last night, the skunks were having a territorial dispute with a few of the neighborhood cats. I was dead asleep until I wasn't. I was not roused by any sound, but a scent. My house is very poorly insulated. If there is an odor outside, it may as well be inside. You get the idea. From the second floor back room that was recently my son's bedroom, I had lit there, fell asleep watching Netflix. But from my sound sleep, suddenly my nostrils flared and I caught the scent of what must have been a family of skunks that moved in below my front porch. The house quickly filled up with a fog of the defense mechanism of these far from helpless creatures. Evacuate, evacuate, get out of the house. I'm choking, I can't escape. My eyes are tearing, I'm coughing. I ran out the front door with my car keys and drove the car to the Wawa on the corner. I pulled into the parking lot and a man immediately came up to my car, motioning with his hands. I got out of my car and he asked me, are you my Uber? <laughs> oh, my God. Is that how that ends on that line? I ended it there, <coughs> but then then I have a part two. Okay. That's, fuck, I love that ending line. <laughs> are you my Uber? <laughs> yeah, I got to yeah, 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 yeah. Jump in. The part two? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I replied to the question. Usually Ubers have a sign on them saying Uber. And as you can see, no sign. Next question. Are you married? Answer. Yes. Him backing away. Oh, okay. God doesn't like that. Okay. Okay. Me trying to explain about skunks. The reason I'm here, not trying to prostitute myself, checking what I had on a shirt that said yes. And the long white pants, not showing any skin. Me going inside store because killing time, looking for the breakfast sizzly with the croissant and bacon, egg, and cheese, two for five dollars. So I get two, pour myself a cup of coffee, figuring I'm going to be here for a while, waiting for the skunk fog to dissipate. dissipate. Also, for good measure, a piece of chocolate cake and some Reese's cup, king size, 
grabbing all to the automated checkout, which replaced cashiers in the impatience of the world. I figure it all out, realizing I have again forgotten my reusable bag, either in my rush out of the house or in the trunk of my car. I head outside. The man is still there. I look over at him and say, your Uber never came? And he says, no, still waiting. Me thinking to myself, I do not have anything to do. Maybe I could help this guy out. I say, where are you going? He says, Laureldale, which is the next town. I am familiar. I had in-laws who are ex-laws now who used to live there. I say, do you want to ride? He says, oh, yeah, are you sure? And I say, yeah, I'm trying to kill some time waiting for the stink to air out from dot, dot, dot. He says, oh, okay, I will cancel. He is typing into cell phone. He gets in, says, I'm sorry, I'm drunk, and I smell, and proceeds to roll down window of car. It's not far, right off the highway, and he says, right here. And I say, oh, okay, I pull up, and he gets the attack of the chatties and starts telling me all about himself, and I'm having an inner dialogue with God, asking him, is this how it's all going to end? I say a couple times when he takes a breath, oh, okay, here you go, et cetera. Yet he opens the car door, but does not get out. I ask him, what's your name again? He says, Jared. I say, Jared, when you call an Uber and you get to your destination and the driver brings you in, do you get out of the car or do you stay and talk to the driver? He says, gets out of the car. I say, okay, it's time for you to get out of my car. He says, oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were having a moment. I reply, no. And he continues on talking about Jesus and God. And I'm thinking he's one of those religious fanatics that murders hookers and cuts them up and throws them into the bay. But I think they caught that guy. So I continue to say, Jared, as he begins another story, I really don't have time for another story. I am tired and I want to go home and try to get some more sleep. It's time to go. He reluctantly got out very slowly, inner dialogue of me praying to God to get this MF out of my car and thanking him for sparing my life. Looking around in my car, realizing in my haste to escape, I had left both of my cell phones home. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, and so if anything would have happened, I would have been fucked. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> is what that what that Ooh. conclusion at the end was Ooh. well i'm glad Ooh, you're all right yeah, that, yeah, was, yeah. Yeah. that was a true story <laughs> well glad you made it sorry it went on i forgot no. how long that thing was no that was that was good man it's just uh, that's probably the longest thing i ever wrote <laughs> that i'm so glad that you got to share it with my wife and i it's pretty much it just left, just my wife and I and you. And so that reminds me. I don't want to keep a, you up if you guys want to go to bed. No, no, I'm chilling. Um, I'm ready to uh, share some more poetry. I don't know if you heard ahead. yet for me. Uh, I don't know if you like my poetry or not, but if you do, I have one called The Storm, based off a true story um, put together from a few different storms. Woke up to crash, a flash of light so bright, smoke stacks so high it lit up the night. In come the deluge, I took flight, the prelude to a maelstrom, must take refuge, it's hell soon. Ran to the living room, slipped and fell, boom, right on cue, another crack of the light, deafening, threatening, reckoning from above, no love, no coffee for the table. Man, no love for the coffee table. Fuck that line up. Not able to stand stable. Knee bleeds as I limp. Little gimp. Stumbling, mumbling. Fuck this shit. Thunder rumbling in pain. The rain a torrent. Wind tossed trees. Mind lost ease. Tore up signs to say stop now, please. Soar from my mind down to my knees. 
This damn storm, a swarm of bullshit, took some form like some paranormal witch. I'm not finished writing this, because the storm still rages on within this. That last line was freestyle, by the way. Did you just write that right now off the cuff, or, or that was part of the poem? Uh, the last line was uh, uh, the, the last line of the poem is like a paranormal witch, and I said, and I'm still not writing or whatever I said. I forget what I said now. To it, damn it! So I hate about free song. It's about storms still going because it's still so not scary. finished because it's still in this or something. Yeah, so. okay, it took four. Okay, so damn the storm. Oh yeah, I'm still recorded. Hey, I can rewind back and figure out the rest of that poem. But yeah, freestyle the last line of that poem. Um, yeah, so uh, let's come up with a word together. Let's first come up with um, imagery, um, a season. Name a season. Spring. Um, okay, name a color. Mm, white. Spring, white, spring. When I think of white and spring, I think of like the tide or waves or like the crackling of like the melt off from the mountains and the rivers and stuff and like rapids. So let's go with rapid. Babe, search rapid, rapids, rapids or flowing rivers or anything of that nature. The white crackling of water of a, or torrent. No, no, you're dude, searching your thing. She's fucking with me. She's like. She knows what we're doing. Yeah, rapid or like torrent or like so like it's that foam that I'm looking at, like spring and white, like it's that. So anything to do with that torrent, rapids. Uh, uh, whirlpool. Yeah, whirlpool will work too. Cycle. All right. Spring white. Cycle. Could do cycle. I'm sure you got some of cycle. Wow. Is that we we did we hit a fucking spot you couldn't find a poem for? Did I do it? I've been trying to fucking stump her for like a year and a half now. All right. Wait. Okay. It's just really short, but it's less about breaking cycles than it is about making new ones. But cycle. I like two sentence poems. They're the best. I did a whole a series of two sentence horror stories. Um, oh, I did it last year. Oh. Um. Let's think of it. How about autumn? I don't have autumn. Okay. How about all of them? <laughs> That's probably pretty likely. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> it's like all autumn. No, how about all of them? Like, yeah, I got one for that. All right. So much easier. Yeah, that's cool. It's from my Catalyst Melt page. And it also doesn't have that phrase in it. So I don't know where this came from, but it's what you're getting. <laughs> if knots are knots, we bind our minds into false attachment, it scratches surface of reality. The causality of countless casualties is causing mass confusion. What is it we put ourselves into? How do we get into something new? And when did you, me, or them get flipped into these tricks and illusions? Hall of Mirrors makes it clear that perception of awareness is what's left to right. Time to tighten the flaws, to carry our claws into the next set of circles. Examine this plan and imagine letting go of attachment. Find the source of your values and sorcery yourself into places less like hell 
to find freedom from the chains all over your brains. I don't think it had all of them in it, but it had a lot of ofs and some alls. That was uh, really dope. Chains all over your brain. He has all of me. <laughs> Can you hear that one? Yeah. Okay. The moon waxes as my candle burns. Turning but always facing each other. You see all of me, but I only ever see one side of your face. Who placed us like this? Waning towards insane. It's about time I skipped home. You're welcome to come along, smoke my bong and sing my song. We were grown here, but now we steer to the sky and ask why no more. The answers are clear, lips no longer covered in fear and brains gripping truth with amusement. The score is one and we are one. It's time for the last song to be sung. I wrote that as y'all were reading tonight, I think. That's the one you wrote while we were reading? Cool. Officially midnight. Fan, fan, fan. Day two yeah, of open It just mind. struck midnight. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we so just we actually like switched it to the next day. This is the first time we ever made so. it to Saturday, I think. Is this yeah. a record? Is this a record length um, for you guys, or have you? It's pretty had... recordy. I think, <laughs> I think this is record, bro. That's we started. We I started at uh, four fifty Mountain Time, and it's now midnight. So. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. That means 10, it's three o'clock in the 11, morning here. No, it's two o'clock in the morning. Seven, seven hours. It's two a.m. I got another poem if 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 you want to hear it. Sure. All right. I don't know if have you heard the us. Uh, I don't know if you've heard this one. I think I've read it once before, but I don't know if you were there. It's called Sometimes. I ride high on this feeling. Sometimes my stride is kneeling. Ceiling hit, sick of the bullshit. Stick with the full hit to the face. I lose grace trying to embrace this reality mentality split. Gravity pulls quick. Click, click, click. Another lost soul tossed in the shit. Sit for a bit. Gaze to range, strange thoughts I coughed up, raised by strangers, dangers where I learned to be tough, earned every scar. I'm here because of dumb luck, just a dumb fuck, smashing my fists into the walls of my mind, find some sort of line that tossed it to the side, lost without my pride, full stride, only fools hide. I need to flaunt my flaws, balls to the wall, face first, bracing for the falls, ways worse than anyone ever saw, never seen as I bleed, keep it low key for those that know me, no, I don't need those things. Kings of a broken world, torn apart by unspoken words, two thirds hurt, one part where the fun starts, full heart, this is where the rum starts, lost in the dark, looking for the right hearts, parts of my mind need to feed on good vibes. Saying goodbye to the rude ties. Stay tuned to the tides in and out on time. Propose a new rhyme to close those parts of my mind. I chose to part ways with without saying shit. Just blaze them, rearrange them. I'm trying to stay fit. And that's the end of this poem. Thanks for listening to it. <laughs> trying to stay fit. That's a story of my life. I, know, I never told you guys how old I am, but I'm 61. I would yeah. not have guessed that. I know. I'm old. So Girl, you're doing a... good, though. Nah, you ain't old. You <laughs> the as older old as you, you get. Feel. <laughs> I feel young, but the older you get, the harder it is to get the weight off once it starts packing on, you know? Yeah. So I, I'm kind of at My this big stage. My wife and I came up with the plan for that. And what's the plan? We're just we're just gonna drive off of a cliff into like a quarry with a van full of explosives and just die in a big explosion. Thelma and Louise quarry. style. Like as soon as we're in too much pain or we're too yeah, like as soon as like my back hurts too much or if I put on too much weight and I get my knees fucked up, it's sorry, like we're just gonna be like, you know, fuck it. We had our fun. We didn't we're not having kids, like so we can, you know. 
when we're ready and we had enough fun and we're in pain or whatever getting to us if we're just going in a big blaze of glory really okay well it's not it's not that bad where i want to kill myself yet <laughs> well, no 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 but, not that we're gonna like we want to kill ourselves or not not nothing like that it's just it's more of a you know the radiant crescendo you know at the end of a beautiful life to go out the way you want to yeah exactly before shit gets too bad for we're like ah, i get it we might have a you want to be yeah want to be yeah. the author and the finisher of your own fate yeah I mean, it could be for another. Maybe not the years. author, but the finisher. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could be another forty years for that, you know. But you know, when the time comes, I want to make sure that we write a beautiful fucking story, the end of our, our love story. Right, a nice ending. Yeah. All right. Um, would you would you like to share another poem with us, and then we'll get my wife to share another one? Uh, I'm gonna go in my book. I have a book. I have a poem in here that's interesting. It's an, it's the last poem in the book. And it is about this woman who is from my town. Her name was Mildred Pierce. I don't know if you ever heard of her. Mildred Pierce? I... Her name's Mildred Norman Peace. Or, sorry, Mildred Norman I've heard those Pierce. names, but I don't know if I've heard them in that order before. Because she, she, has, she <laughs> was um, a spiritual leader that was walking across I guess she was on a, a journey, a 28-year journey for peace, and she was walking across the United States. So this is her story. So I That's wrote it. Amazing. Uh, July 18th, 1908 was when she was born to July 7th, 1981 is when she died. So American spiritual teacher from New Jersey, mystic, pacifist, vegetarian, and peace activist. In 1952, she became the first woman to walk the entire length of the Appalachian Trail in one season. It was a 28-year journey. Her goal was walking across the entire country for peace. She only owned what she wore and carried, walking until she found shelter and fasting until given food. She relied on the hospitality of strangers. She said, people are good. There's a spark of good in everyone. I, and this is my poem. I walked in peace Pilgrim Park today. It was all closed. All, it was closed all summer because the residents let their dogs run in there and did not pick up after them. On my last visit, I brought my bitch Violet. However, she saw another dog and got loose from her harness. She lunged. I was quick to get her in a wrestling hold to keep her from grabbing the other dog. Violet likes to take her toys, rip out the stuffing, and dismantle anything that can be taken apart. I was afraid of what she would do to the smaller dog. After I fully subdued her, I conversed with the other owner while I managed to get her leashed back up. Crisis averted. The small city that I live in is not without its problems. The park is no exception. The sculpture was vandalized and carelessly cut in half. The faded hand-printed tiles surrounding her feet were created by the local school children 15 years ago. My son was one of those creatives. Around the area sat three broken concrete benches. I wondered while I sat there about how the world would have been different if her purpose was achieved and how the, in this dilapidated state, the park represented its antithesis. She devoted her life to her calling of promoting peace. She was a modern day Mother Teresa, akin to Jesus. Her selfless actions were to be honored in the form of this park. Today, when I returned, I noticed that she was repaired and made whole again. I was happy to see that someone extended her this kindness. This left me free to admire the other beauty of the surroundings. The significance of this woman and her timely purpose stands truer today, even though we are still a long way off. This single redeeming act was at least a small step in the right direction. Yo, that was so dope. That, that reminded me of a poem that I wrote about a pet that I lost. I think I might, you might have heard this one before. I don't know. Um, it's about our little kitten, Ganja Blue. It's the first, like, animal that I took on. And I've lost, like, over 70 of my friends and family. But, like, they have control of their own lives, right? Like, But, like, I don't have any kids. 
and I got this kitten, and I was like, I like you, I'm gonna fucking protect you and raise you, and and then he got beat up by this big fucking foreign cat that we I've since beheaded, and um, he died, and we buried him by the river, and we have this beautiful altar set up for him by the, and I sat down there one day, and I, I tried to write a poem, and he helped me out with it. I'm sure you'll be able to guess the parts he helped me with <laughs> as I'm reading. Be like, oh, yep, that was definitely the cat part. Like, <laughs> I already know what you're gonna do. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> uh, have you heard this one before? Ganja no, Blue? I just, I just picking up on on a vibe. I'm just, go ahead. I want to see if I'm all right. right. All right, all right. This is a very emotional one for me too because I love this little boy, man. Like, he was my baby blue. Uh, it's called Ganja Blue. Waters flow, rivers grow, push bank, banks to outer brinks, your soul shines, a shrine we lovingly crafted for you, my sweet baby blue. As long as the sun beams, I'll dream of you, seems you left too soon, seen in every room, and every flower's bloom, every moment spent under the moon, sent to us from her. An angel disguised in fur, the size of your purr is insurmountable. Your eyes were a mountain full, a gaze to be praised. It's safe to say you were a meowsing, arousing my curiosity when you play the pure luminosity of your brain left a stain. It's never been the same. I think of you often, soft and strong. Your spirit will live on. You will forever be ganja, but you'll never be gone. Oh. Love that. I was not right about what I thought you were going to do with that. <laughs> I was wrong. I thought you were going to actually start meowing in the middle of the poem. I did. I did. I threw two meows in there. Dude. Yes, I thought it was going to be just more like insert meow. meowtable. Yeah, right, yo, right, but that right. insert meowtable. Okay, your eyes okay. were a mountain full. Like yo, and then that whole place okay. too where I set it up to. It's safe to wait. A gaze to be <laughs> praised. It's safe to say you were a uh, meowsing instead of like amazing. <laughs> like I set it up to where you think in your head right, like right. I'm gonna say amazing, and then it's like a meowsing, arousing right. my curiosity when you played like the pure right. luminosity. It was good, right? Like he helped me yes. with that. I wouldn't have been, yeah. I'll, I'm not that witty. My little Ganja <laughs> Blue though, did my little kitten, he was that witty. He died just before his first birthday, which was our anniversary. Aww. But you said he was mauled by another animal? Yeah, by, by a barn cat out here. Big fucking boy. We actually had one of his kids we were raising because he almost died in the cold room. There he's a little jelly being a save. Now he's a little meatball. Fucking loves her to death, just all up in her bays, kiss, waking her up, drinking her spit every morning. That's how he Ew. hydrates himself is by sucking <laughs> spit from my wife's mouth. Really? Wow. Yeah. Like that's how we saved this cat was like the barn cat outside, like got into our cold room and got into the closet and there was like a bag of salt there, some tents and shit and like an old kennel. And like in between the bag of salts and the kennel, like she had four kittens. So like two of them were getting fed. One of them was like smashed under the fucking kennel, and one of them was kind of getting fed a little bit. And luckily, I we heard something back there, so I went back there and I looked and was like, "Oh shit!" You know, she took off, and so I took the bag of salt out there, put some blankets down, it came out, and I was like, "I think this one might be dead." Right? Like he wasn't moving; he was like smashing on the things, a little jelly bean. And his sisters all had fur and were like standing up hissing at me, and I see this like little little bugger. You know, a little jelly bean, no fur, no nothing, and went and scooped him up and and had a hey buddy, you 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 there, buddy? He moved around, said okay, buddy, I got you. you know, set it up and made it nice, and he's the only one that survived that we know. Of, uh, we think Sylvester, his, her sister, might be there, but our rabbit, we had a rabbit who had babies at the same time, uh, tore sleeved one of our other bunnies. Or uh, the other kittens, and then two of them got it swooped up by hawks. And he's uh, or either hawks or a cougar. I don't know. I think a hawk one, cougar one, to be honest, because the tracks that I found in the snow. But 
and then we had Meatball. He was the only survivor, and he was the one that was going to die. Like he was shoved in the. Did corner. you feed him? How did he survive? Didn't he still need we, mom? Yeah. What I did was I cleared out, made a nice bed, so when she came back in, the kittens had room to all feed, and she can lay in there comfortably and not cold and stuff. And then my wife and I, I, I mashed up fucking kitten food mixed with hard food and a bit of water, and we would eye drop it into him. And then he got clogged up and couldn't poop. He was fucking like constipated, like he couldn't digest the hard food because he wasn't getting any milk. And by the time that we tried to feed him, so we had to like, it was a whole situation. We're still recording. I should probably still record at this part, but <laughs> and we sa- we saved this baby kitten by rubbing his ass and feeding him good food, and now he just loves us. Here he is, right here. Here, look. look give me my meatball. This is my meatball right here. Wow, he's all black. Yeah, he's and he, he's all black, and he's so fluffy. He's so furry. Wow, look at his eyes. Poofy tail, and he got a big old poofy tail. This meatball. He oh, he's a meatball. Oh yeah, and he smoked DMT before and marijuana. Like, like he's cool. Really? Man. His name's Dimitri. Yeah, yeah. He's he's smoked DMT with us and marijuana. Like he comes up and asks for it. Like if we're smoking fucking DMT or weed, he's like, I want to hit too. And we used to call him Trippy K or Shadow because he was always following. But yeah, he's a really cool cat. What is he number six? Yeah. The only one that survived the. And it's so cute too, because his mom, I built like a, a cinder block like a uh, house for his mom. We had a bunch of cinder blocks in the garden last went uh, last spring, and so I built like this fortress of cinder blocks that like goes in and kind of curves and comes back around, and then has a big wide opening with a trap door that I have. Uh, we had a memory foam mattress, like a plug to pull out and like change her food bowls. But she has like this perfectly like insulated fortress with like my memory foam and blankets and stuff it's the barn cat that lived here when we got here and she's the one that gave us little meatball all her kids died the people before sent them off like or they or the dad bob we had to uh dispatch a few cats while we were out we're on the farm like when i tell you like we in the middle of nowhere and there's like grizzlies and cougars walking in my backyard like it's hard raising cats in in an environment like that like we because you got other bigger crazier cats coming too like it's it's been interesting it's been interesting. Would you like to hear another poem? Sure. I don't know. If, did you hear the poem I read? Uh, I wrote for my mom. I read it in my mo- uh, during Lantern Carrier's uh, feature. I'm not sure. Well, your mom. I, would, I wouldn't remember them anyway because I'm in so many. I go to so many mics. Yeah, that... just, oh, so it'd be new to you, anyways. All right, cool. I like reading this to moms because I because I wrote this for my mom and I and I think that like all moms should hear a poem like this. You know, like anyways. it's called "Mom, I Love You." I wanted to write a poem for someone special to show them how much they mean to me. But it seems to be nearly impossible to encapsulate 38 years of unconditional love. How do I thank her for the gift of life? All the time she held me tight. The chicken soup when I was sick. Each time she gave me encouragement. How could I ever capture with words? I profess it to the songs of birds, beautiful soothing sounds of nature, the nurturing care of poetic nomenclature. I asked the creator for the verbs to use. They responded, there's too many to choose. Pondering on how to show my gratitude, searching my heart for the emotions to include, oceans of memory wash over my soul. Writing the perfect poem, my goal. But how? There's no language to use. I gave it my all, so I'll simply let loose four magic words. Mom, I love you. Did you read that to your mom? You should write that and send it to her for mom, Mother's Day. I've, I've read it to her before. She loves it. I read it to her twice to show up on the mic tonight. I read it again for her. 
Isn't it? I, I love the concept behind it. Like, yeah. And that was, I wanted to go like, instead of like, oh, mom, I wanted to be like, like a poem of me struggling on like, how do you write the perfect poem for, so, you know, like, how do you, you know, encapsulate like a poem? Like, I'm a mama's boy, dude. My dad fucking killed himself when he was young. He was a big, he was a drug cartel leader and shit. Like, fucking, they saw it dope. And like, I got fucking, he, you know, like, I was, grew up in a ghetto, like, fuck up shit. Like, I hate my father and all this. My mom was always there for me, though always took care of us made sure that we were okay and so like i'm a mama's boy straight up dude like it took a while for even just me and my stepdad to get cool you know but i have uh, a good can i read a poem to you yeah i would love to hear it all right there's one it's it's got my mother my all my poem my mother is my muse so all my poems eventually go around to coming around to something that my mother said to me once or something like that so this is one of those poems it's called the calling when i was in third grade approximately eight years old i was mandatorily required to attend church every day except saturday children as the rule of the day were to be seen and not heard i could not voice my displeasure or risk getting a beating with the belt for back talking punishment was corporal dcp and p did nothing back then if i dare buck the system Having independent thoughts were always risky and never fully understood by my elders. As I grew, I learned about the holy order and thought perhaps that if I was good enough that God would take me in and save me from my sin and the rest of the world, which seemed so corrupted to me at the time. I tried to be good. I did everything the nuns told me. I prayed hard. I meditated on God's creation, but not his word because that was only for the highly educated priests who had the calling and could interpret all the symbolic and secret languages opened by the saints of God. I asked myself the question, could I be a saint? My family said, no way. Why was that idea so far out there? Weren't the priests and nuns at one time someone's sons or daughters? Were they not human? or transformed into something greater. I would not give up my quest. I wore the scapula, it was blessed. I was instructed if I never took it off, I would automatically go to heaven. I told my mom when she asked why I would never take it off, but she seemed to be annoyed by my answer. My mom had a general annoyance with all things associated with the church at the time. She, for one, did not believe that we had to attend Catholic school. I remember my parents disagreeing about many things back then, before the divorce. However, I knew I had the calling, and no one was going to tell me otherwise. When I mentioned this to the Holy Order, they did not take it seriously. When I mentioned it to my mother, she just laughed and said, no woman in this family could ever be a nun. She said I would not understand this until I was older. <laughs> Draw your own conclusions from that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. So, were you born in 1963? In who wants to know? <laughs> I want to know. I'm just wondering because you said you were turning 60. And my mom. It was in the 60s. Yes. 70s. Well, my yes. mom's turning 70 this year. She was born in 1953. Mm -hmm. 53. Yes. And you say you're turning 60. I'm like, that's like 60. But so I, I get where you're coming from too. Like my mom was just a generation behind y'all. Like she was the one that was like pushing forward for all of y'all to get pushing forward and for this whole like right. That's why weed is legal in Canada. Thank you, hippies. Thank you, Jen. Like uh what were we out? You know they Gen made X, weed but... legal here as well. Well, in most places, yeah. Where are you yeah, at? New Jersey. New Jersey are is you legal in Jersey? To recreational yeah. recreational in Jersey? Yeah. Congratulations, dude. Mushrooms are next on the list. Uh, we're part of uh, uh, PAC, the Psychedelic Association of Canada. Uh, follow them on Twitter. We we make most of their uh, promotional content and stuff. Uh, Instagram, <laughs> not Twitter. Fuck. I'm, I'm trying to promote stuff. I don't even know how. Um, yeah, <laughs> check out this, this. We were trying to get a petition signed uh, to legalize end of life psilocybin usage. For like people who are like terminally ill and like are you know destined to die within 
a week or so or whatever uh to be able to sit with um the right facilitator and in the right mood set and setting and give them high doses of psilocybin and kind of connect them with i don't know if you've ever eaten psilocybin before felt connected with like the collective consciousness of mother gaia and the earth and all that bullshit but um yeah we. Were i didn't feel that before. when i <laughs> Yeah, oh, you didn't have a good trip then. You wasn't with the right people, man. I got you, yo. If we ever see tell you you want to have a good time, I got you. All I, no, all I did was laugh like a, a hyena. Yo, that's, I can't stop laughing either when I'm yes. on my do my, my cheeks yes. hurt the next day. <clears throat> yes. Fucking smiling and laughing so hard to my cheeks. But, I, but I couldn't really focus on anything because I was just yeah. too busy laughing at everything. Oh, that's great. That's fucking great. But we'll, so at end of life patients for die, if, if they can have that as their last memory, even like, yeah, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. how, how cool would that be? Um, so we, we, we had a petition going, um, we're going to be rerunning it. We're also going to, uh, some movie opening dosed, uh, about, um, psilocybin and P PTSD. And how it's helping a lot of uh, uh, veterans and stuff. Um, yeah, my buddy from Kentucky, he uh, he did quite a few tours in Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, seven tours. He joined just before 9/11 happened, uh, so he was like already fully trained. He was one of the first boots on ground. Did seven tours. He was in um, Fallujah, which was one of the worst battles. He was running a cyber squad through Fallujah. Shotgun, a sniper rifle, and his M16 carbine, um, and a bunch of grenades. <laughs> and and um, he made it out alive. Yeah, he went uh, seven tours, and now he has uh, in Kentucky Freedom Farms. His daughter Cadence and uh, Liberty or something like he named it. And he lives in Freedom Farms. Like he earned his living. Uncle Sam paid him well. He's set now. He has a cool life, and his his wife is so cool, man. Uh, she's my my homie uh i don't want to say she's a witch because that like has like negative connotations she's an herbalist an alchemist right mm -hmm. um an energy worker right so uh they were they wanted to create these centers uh, for ptsd troops because it took him like years to adapt like even when i seen him babe what was it like fucking six years after service and he was like dude i was everything's been cool like i've been straight but then he's like i was fucking waiting in line the other day and there was an arab in front of me and like someone started arguing with the customer and like you know a car backfired up and he was like i almost snapped back into a you know a full-blown fucking panic attack you know like, but so they're they're trying to start up uh he had 13 a day which was the amount of suicides of our veterans um each day there was 13 or 13 a week or something like that whatever um, but he started that, and, and we're trying to get, like, psilocybin legalized yep. here in Canada and down in the States for, like, PTSD, end-of-life patients, people who need uh, just to feel loved and feel that they're, when, you know, like they're part of something greater, and they are the universe. And when they pass, you're just moving on to a new, new form or a new direction. Speaking of which, I know a little bit about it because I study, I study like anything like therapies that, cause I, I counsel, I'm not a counselor, but I, I'm a recovery. I'm, my title is peer recovery specialist, but I work with people who, um, women who have, you know, uh, substance use disorders who, you know, it kind of it ruined their lives and then they're, you know, they're, also to get into our program you have to be pregnant so chances are if so they don't straight the really ones that really need the help yeah if they don't I've been, in, if... I've been in recovery programs myself i've you know i've been on suicide wards i've been to a hospital the fucking loony bin the whatever you want to call it rehab centers right. all all type shit and the the women who you are speaking of are the ones that need the most help yeah, so they're are they're in danger of losing their kids and everything. Um, and you know the social service agencies, so the DCP cool. and peace. That yo, and Chanson does what he Chanson helps out kids and shit too. Like, 
Yeah, he he works with kids at the I think at the YMCA. Uh, you guys daycare. are so fucking awesome and nice. I'm so glad that I got to meet the two of you guys. Like my fucking heart goes fully out to to you for helping these women out and for Chanson for helping them kids out. Like I'm so glad that you guys are out there making a difference. Like it really it fills my heart with joy. Like I I can't express that enough. I'm sorry if I cut you off. I'm just, That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you. Thanks. Yeah, that's what Chanson always says too. <laughs> yeah. He does. I'm sure because he, he, he feels happy. Yeah, I appreciate you. Like, cause really, yeah. Teresa, you, yo, know, hey, me and Chanson ain't, ain't some average motherfuckers, bro. Like, when you got some people like us being like, yo, I appreciate you. And Chanson is a pastor. Yeah. So, he goes and he gets up there in front of the pulpit and starts preaching stuff. And I, yeah. I watched him one time. He told me, oh, I'm going to be preaching on this Sunday. And I said, Yo, oh, can you shit, record it one night? When, can you go? I want to hear yeah, a, a, I, a sermon I don't know from if Chanson. They're recorded what? or not. You can. Yeah, you can oh. tune in. He's a member of this church. It's called. Um, do they stream the the service? Yeah, they do. They every Sunday at like 930. Oh, post they, it in the um, chat, please. I want to see stream. Um, I love him, man. He's so cool, man. He's such a kind relevant, heart, like. relevant church. That's the name of it. Relevant church. Relevant you post church. A link in the chat for me. Yeah. All right. Yo, I remember Sorry. the first time I met you was with Chanson. It was the first time I met the both of y'all. And fucking we sat there. Yo, it was the only other time the show went for like six, seven hours. And it was at the end, it was just you, me, and Chance, and, and we were like just fucking chilling. I got to meet my wife. Eventually, walked out. She's like, I'm trying to sleep here, being loud as fuck because I got the headphones on, right? So I'm like yelling. <laughs> She's like, Yeah, I'm trying to fucking go to sleep. Uh, I don't want to keep you guys up if you're trying to. No, no, not now. No, we're chilling. She's still smiling. We're, we have a good yeah, time. Yeah, I'm here. I'm good. She's actually reading the next poem after you post that link. So while she's finding that link, babe, uh, coming up next, we got Catalyst. I know this is still being recorded. We're going to have to uh, edit the shit out of this, but we might get some good stuff at the end here. This is the after hours. We normally don't record it, but I have a feeling that we're we going to hear some magic coming out. So I'm going to keep this thing going. <laughs> Yo, welcome to Open Minds Up. <laughs> Give us the backup, yeah. Uh, welcome to the show. We have many poets for you tonight. Your delight is our surprise. Okay, I got one that I picked out off the prompt magic that you didn't give me, but I took anyway. Nice. Okay. <clears throat> This is a hello from consciousness itself, only leaving my lips out of the necessity of your ears screaming to see. Normally, I'm the quiet one, but today I am my pen's teller. Speaking is a collection of energy mem memory resurrection. Moving molecule made muscles, lubricated parts primed all aligned to imprint a feeling. It's a kind of magic we've been practicing for epochs. We used to stop eating to see because time moves slowly when we fast. The heartbeat is our connection to the past, easier to hear when it's pounding in ears. A deep breath reminds the resting body of mind melding, an assortment of machines molded together by thought creating time. You call yours yours and I'll call mine mine. So long as we know this was always consensual, regardless of the senses refusal to adapt. You're not trapped, just caught in attachment. You are loved because you are love. No reason for the below or above. Mm. Caught in attachment. Um, I can't find this link. Oh my God, I haven't been in this church in a while and now I can't Holy find the darn shit, link. Babe. I get, you, we so can get it from Chance on. He probably yeah, has we'll, it. We'll get it from Chance on. Did you just hear what the fuck my wife just spit? Mm hmm. Dude, she she thinks she can't write poetry sometimes, or she doesn't have the. Uh, she's still kind of getting over the uh, the nervousness of performing. No, it's it. none of that. It's because once what I start, it? I don't ever want to fucking stop. Is my problem. So. Well, like, 
Dude, she's got some of the sickest fucking poetry and like lines or just thoughts, like two line things, like prompts to like anything. Like, she's so cool, man. And she never wanted, even tonight, you heard like spit elementals, like, oh my god, like, yo, we need more. Are you, what are you doing? You finally spit, like, you need to sign up for Monday, fucking New York, get you up on there. Cause dude, she has the coolest shit. I mean, whatever. And I'm know? just sitting here, it's just like, yeah, I can say the things. But if there's like a time you gotta be somewhere and do something, I'm like, I'm probably not gonna make it, but I'll send one of my alter egos. All right, well, while we're still in the moment when your alter ego might be one that know some sort of poet, then you might as well just go ahead and show it. Let's see what you got, baby. Um, yeah, I want reach. Got one for reach? All right, unmute yourself and uh, bless us with them words, baby. Well, reach is a pretty common unmute word. Yourself. I did unmute oh. myself. Give me a sec here. There's lag, okay? I'm confused. Let's see, reach, reach, reach. I'll just read the second one. A victim in a time vice. You let yourself go. You're capable of growth beyond sad songs. So stop stringing along a muse for your tune. Get out of your way. Stop weighing options and get lost in solidity. No trust can be achieved without self-believing. You're bleeding all over but not making a mess. Which direction matters when all matter needs you? The to-do list elongated by every breath, but rest was why you came here. Blaming self for shortcomings on the home front, working harder than possible not to topple. Face first yourself, undo your belt and hang it up high. If you die, you best be happy. I don't want to sit next to a sad meal anymore. A sad meal. <laughs> like that. <laughs> sad of the heavy meal. I was married to a sad meal for 10 years. Oh, thank God you're free. That uh, was brutal. Yeah, Jess and I, like, we have our fights and stuff, you know, hormones, rage, and, you know, mental illness and what have you is on my side. And so shit gets crazy sometimes, but we love each other so much. And it's very that, obvious like, that you guys, it, yeah, you, it's really obvious. It's like, we, I finally found my soulmate, dude, halfway across the fucking yes. world from Florida. She's Alberta. Listen to this crazy shit. I don't know if you know this little factoid about us. My birthday is June 21st. I was born in 1984. Every four years or so, my birthday falls on Father's Day. So June 21st is the third June of every four years or so, right? I have no kids. We can't have kids. We could if we wanted to, but we don't really want to. Uh, not yet, at least, right? Like, Maybe when I'm old, but um, just what happens, her birthday is May 9th, which every four years or so falls on Mother's Day. She's cool. from Alberta, the land of the snow. I am from Florida, the Sunshine State. <laughs> um, opposites attract, like we're so different but so similar in so many ways that it's it's beautiful like and we wouldn't have found each other like we honestly believe that the internet was created so her and i can find each other like so all the little kid i mean pictures, yeah i definitely had something to do with the cats and the cheeseburgers but we we were also there no it was us dude the cats and the cheeseburgers and all the dogs fucking all that shit came afterwards it was the internet was created so we could find each other. Who's to say you're wrong or right? Right? Can you <laughs> no prove, one really can, knows. Can you prove me wrong? That's Terry, right. Can you prove me wrong? No one said no one said it wasn't. <laughs> um, it could have been created so the three of us could be sitting right here with her yeah. as my wife and you as a fucking great ass friend of ours. I'm the audience. Talking about po yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> this the whole world was made for this moment right here. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna write uh, read a poem about that thin line of 
reality and what it's created from. It's called thin as bubble skin. It's beautiful yet terrifying. How steep our minds are. It's suitable yet verifying how deep you find scars. Thin as bubble skin. Human psyche, Mike, mighty and meek. Spin crafts troubled sins. I'm superhuman, feisty, can speak in poetry openly. Honestly, no why, no lies, so wise, grin so wide. As fucked up that I fucked up those last two lines. Let me start over again. So I, I, I think I know what I haven't read it in a while, and like it's so funny that those are the words that I fucked up. Where I'm like, I got. Yeah, like I like I know I could spit this shit, and then I'm like, bah, 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 I used the wrong words. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's like, kind of late, so you know, yeah, the later it, is. it gets, I mean, I get a little punchy. Hey, I've, I've been through <laughs> half a bottle of vodka, so yeah, I'm a little punchy. Hey, let me try this again because this is a very beautiful poem. It really is. I found the church thing too. I'm excited. I'm gonna send it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Put it in the chat so I can click on it and have it in my. Uh, browser thing okay thin is bubble skin it's beautiful yet terrifying how steep our minds are it's suitable yet verifying how deep you find scars thin as bubble skin human psyche mighty and meek spin crafts troubled sins i'm superhuman feisty can speak in poetry openly, honestly, no lies, so wise, grin so wide, been socially awkward, need a doctor, seem locally bothered, greedy control these monsters, globally hoping we have the opportunity to thicken the layer of humanity's bonds. Totally coping, he's half the community, stricken a soothslayer, he truthfully responds. My mind wanders off across vast distances. Try to find responders. I toss past instances of myself in any direction. Many reflections of yourself in semi-perfection, demi-inflections. Hold tight to any imperfections. I knew to glue them in place. Pulled right to my face. Plenty corrections in lieu of mistakes. One day when this bubble pops, I'll be ready. Won the game, the humble way, slow and steady. Cool. Slow and steady wins the race. Tortoise and the hare. Yeah. Make the connection. I love that one to the uh, try to find responders. I toss past instances of myself in any direction. Many reflections of yourself and semi perfection, demi inflections. Hold tight to any imperfections. Like, yo, what? I'm in, I, I like this one. Um, Oh, this one should not be read, probably. I mean, it's it's a it's a good one, but it it turns a bit. Of... Okay. Uh, well, damn. All right, Terry. Yes. It's your turn. Oh. Okay. Uh. Because I'm looking for a poem still, so <laughs> we're gonna loop. To you, we're, we're doing the, the one switching off of you. Or actually, I have a short one I just found. It was the one that I wanted to do. Should I go for it? Sure. All right. Huh? Uh, this one's called Light. Okay, man. Oh, you smoking weed? All right. Huh. This poem's gonna got a thirty second prelude. Light.
light. And positivity flows through my body. Those rise by me, together beside me. Intelligence relevant beyond lethal, no weapons needed. Bless no evil seated, margarita seated on a beach beaconing, welcoming, transitioning, speak, questioning, malfunctioning freaks. Atomic winter, the weather's not getting any better. Darkness, the farthest, can go on long. The heartless throw photons wrong. Vessels of light, I just might sing them a song. From now on, it's a freestyle that I'm going to go on. Just because I'm feeling the vibe of that last poem. Tom, open minds, open mic. Set the tone, make it feel right. Don't recite some bullshit that everybody knows. Like, they know where you're going to go next on a fucking mic. But switch it up. Go ahead and spit some stuff about the love for the miniature whales off the coast of... I think it's Brazil, somewhere Argentina. See if Cortez, these tiny whales are being deaded up. Just in the nets from a different fish that these people are trying to be catching up. It's fucking sad. We get on a happier topic. How about barefoot skiing in the tropics? Yo. I miss the way that the foam from the waves hit my face every time my feet push past a bitch ass place. <sighs> Smashing on them. Waves flying past me like I'm the one splitting through the water. Fuck, I am one. I am the son. I am the daughter. I am the human being with my feet in the water, being pulled by a motorboat, ski rope, and some crazy fool. But it's all cool until I slip up and smash the water face fat, face first, face last, face dirt. Smash into that shit like Mother Earth was like, Fuck you and your bitch. <laughs> like, whew. But it was fun while it was amazing. But once you face plant into the fucking water, you're like, okay, then let's go home, drink a beer, maybe make a poem about it in a few years. All right, I got to cut it out there. Freestyle, there's too much, man, I've been way too much for the light. I went on a whole different fucking trip with it. I have this poem called Soulmate, since you mentioned that. Um, it's a short one. So it's soul unwinding, spiraling out of this plane, soaring on invisible wings to the heavens to merge with the energies of the creator, glowing with a little light, leading the way home, guiding our paths to the infinite spaces, organized disorganization, polarities colliding, opposites attracting, soulmates reuniting, demons and angels conspiring. Oh, I love that. Thank you. That was so dope. So amazing. Thank you for reading that. I got to cuddle up with my wife and, and hear that from you. And it was like, <laughs> Do you want me you to like... let you guys go cuddle? No, <laughs> I... we're still chilling. We still got more poetry. All I got right. something else too I want to spit for you. Okay. Because um, you just, you said that. I don't know if you've heard this one before. Um, Have you heard... I can find it. The Last Adam. I like the title. So, Adam is. I think a, I, you know, that sounds really familiar, but maybe. 
Maybe Here. I, I don't. I'm not gonna remember. We did this everything. one on our feature. Do this the yeah. first Eve first, babe. Can you read the first Eve? All right. So this, uh, she's gonna read the first Eve, and I'll read the last Adam, and. Hers is like E-V-E, -E, like the first Eve of something. And Adam in my is A-T-O-M, like the last Adam. So the first Eve and the last Adam. You're muted, babe. Oh, you're trying to find the phone still. Yeah. Okay. okay, I got it. The sun shone, a swan song to being alone. You rode handsomely along the day, aligning the laughs and dancing with your hands, a magic man, manifesting a destiny neither one of us could yet see, coming over and over in sync. You made me think about how my deepest dreams even came to be. It was you I've seen in every scene since I was forced to breathe. Now, with focused breath, you show me death and how it's not what it appeared to be. No fear, just freedom to feel and peel down to our final forms. We frolicked like frogs kicking, licking and sticking ourselves deeper into the elves. Our skin shining like diamonds, diving into the minds of many, making golden entities blush. You are the only rush for me, taking it as slowly as can be, knowing we are int eternally intertwined, one mind moving through moments, always seeing and knowing. It started in hearts deep on that first evening. We stepped into unbelievable conceivability. I believe in you and you believe in me. Feeling crazy, craving the creative crevices of your brain, baby. Am I insane? Maybe. Thanks for saving me. It's absolutely fucking amazing how you flow through the 3D space we seem to be trapped in. But I'm laughing every time we break into the next plane of being. It's beginning to be so frequently. I think if we push a little harder, we could secretly become the astral beings that we see in these higher realms. Is that DMT? May I please have a smell? Fuck it, let me puff it till my lungs swell. Holding, holding, holding. Oh hell, I just broke through the heaven. Now I'm laughing with the L's. Mother Gaia, sharing knowledge of the past, incarnations of our love, knowing it'll never pass. Forever together, even after we gasp for our last bit of air, our souls release the grasp that we had on this physical form, reborn. It won't be long till we can keep each other warm once more. You're my favorite soul. It's always been you that I adore. Sworn to love and protect you until the last atom is torn apart and the universe turns dark. It'll be just you and I beaming through space as pure love and light. You know I'm right. Right by your side for the rest of time for I am yours, I am yours and you are mine. You're so gay. Ah, you're gay too. You're gay for me. That was weird the way you disappeared out of the scene while you were. <laughs> while but you were did still I show talking. up next to her though? Did you see me pop next no, to her? No, I didn't. No, you were just gone. Oh, she has it on speaker view. She don't have gallery view. I actually went next to my wife and sung it to her and did all that. Uh, I heard I heard you with her, but I didn't see anything except your background. We'll catch it one day. We'll put on the, the gallery. Yeah, if you're in the thing together and you read, you both read it like together, like it's a collab. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was cool. I like I like collabs. I don't really get to do many because I don't know why. Um, I don't think a lot of people are really into doing collabs, but I guess maybe they're just not into doing too. a collab. 
um, Magus May fifth. Yeah, May fifth. Magus is doing all collabs for his feature. I don't have. Uh, well, he's cool, man. He's one of our. Buddies, I don't really, really have any collabs with anybody. I wanted to do a collab with um, Propaganda Poet. Oh, you and Prop would do a good one. That would be the. Oh, I would love to hear a fucking collab between. Speaking of him, have you heard? Have I ever did Human Unity for you? It's the one I wrote for Prop. No. All right. I think you might like this one. I wrote this one for uh, Propaganda Poet for when he featured for us. I wrote it with him and Hart, right? Bear paws, wolf teeth. Steel blades, bone sheath, creep silent, no speak. Tonight we feast, blessed meat, greens from endless rows, plant seeds they shall grow. Old enough to know, this story just goes and goes and goes rain falls rivers flow sky delivers snow move close it's getting cold but this is the path chose ancestral twine twists ropes to bind our minds together with hope future ever changing We've been switching lanes, be amazing, rearranging this reality, convergence of our mentality, the urgency of our unity is stronger than it'll ever be, so follow me. The sounds you and me create humanity. Let's make this planet great for the future seeds to grow and blossom. This earth could be awesome if the first step we take is together as one. Cool. You know, I have a lot of, I have his books and I have a lot of his, he sent me music too. I was listening, I was jamming out to his music. Like, I really like some of the songs he wrote. Like, this he's is dope, stolen man. Yeah, pro- yeah, like, he's <laughs> fucking dope, man. Prop is stolen cool, dude, life. man. <laughs> I love his, like, I don't know, his whole I thing. got a lot of his performances and all the videos that we've recorded yeah. from these open mics. I got a lot of his perform- What I think I want to do too is once we finally find a program that can like edit the videos and upload them and shit and we get we deal with all that. I also want to take everyone's performance from all the shows and make like you know like a- on YouTube or something. Yeah, and do one just and then people can look at yeah. it have propaganda poet and have every right. individual poem that he's spit plus his feature and all the ones he spit on open mics and all that have all every time you came here and spit on open minds right like take that and make like four six hour you know what i mean yeah do it once a year like the year in review and it's like bam and and you guys have like a whole video of like every time you spit on a friday here like that'd be cool we should do that yeah they um a lot of people are doing that like other other platforms are taking people like just recording I stuff and i recording the whole show from beginning to end and then see i you do know. that but i like to edit it i don't want to live broadcast this because like uh sometimes you get zoom bombers sometimes we just get people we don't want or sometimes people like don't want to be you know live casted right uh, so like i film them all yeah, we tried it a few different ways. We settled on this. We're still pretty new in this. Like I said, like I started writing when I was 13 because I wanted to write rap. And then I stopped for like 20 years because I was selling drugs. But I was still freestyling and shit. Yeah, I was Yeah, yeah, I was doing all the fucking crazy shit that I'm fucking rap about now. But like, um, I got back into writing and doing this. And, and I, I got to read on uh, Open Mic. And my wife was just like, yeah, you should do that. I was like, cool, all right. So I started Open Minds, Open Mic. And it's like been eight months. And our first feature was Stacy Dyson. Like, yeah. Well, I was in an open mic with her, and she's like, "I was like, yeah, I got a little open mic I'm starting." And she's like, "Oh, you know, I can come by and like feature." And I didn't know who Stacy Dyson was, so I like looked her up, and I'm like, 
holy fuck she's a laureate prize winner fucking like the voice of a yeah like not kind of a big deal like she's a fucking big deal i was like yo i don't know how many people i can get to the show and she's like i don't care because i've had shows where i performed in front of three people and it was the best show ever i've had shows where i've performed in front of thousands of people and it was like shit i was just like all right so then i started i was like who wants to feature i think after uh her it was prop it was like stacy dyson prop jane spoken word we've had lantern care we yeah dude like we've had and and i just started it i didn't really know anybody in it like i, I joined a few new Yorkans, a few open mics here and there but i was just like hey like you know hi i'm tom like come to my open mic i'm you know a nice guy blah 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 <laughs> like you know whatever really but yeah i love it man like we, we've created a beautiful family over the last few months and like i I like guess it's, it's made me feel like I have a little bit of a purpose in life, you know? <laughs> well, you know, it really does help connect people being on these platforms. And half of my friends are, all, I didn't have that many friends to begin with. So whoever I had that was my friend was gone after two years after the pandemic. I mean, nobody wanted to get together. Everyone's paranoid. They were going to get sick and die. Because every time you would hear the stupid news broadcast, oh, family got together for a picnic everyone died and everyone dies yeah <laughs> like fuck you you know but you know that's what happened and so barely barely have anyone that i'm still talking to that was actually my friends before the pandemic and everybody that I, is my friends now i made from being online on these groups yo so. i consider you my friend from the first night we <laughs> met yo like you me and chances stayed up for like hours after the mic just chilling like spend poetry and like get to know each other like i consider you terry uh one of my friends I've, thank you i've probably been in the same zoom room as you for over 100 hours by now yeah i mean we clock hours in here we definitely do yeah and and around some, some of the other people from yeah. all over the world man like that's cool yeah. that's what i love about open minds too like we get some like it's a smaller group most of the time and we could just have like really cool fucking people man that just decided to like i don't know join up with me and i feel really like appreciative of that and definitely have there. somewhere to stay if i go to california definitely have somewhere to stay if i yeah if i um go to scotland or, or, or if fucking i go houston to or the, the bay area or there's New one York, in england or fucking south florida there's one or... in I think it was Philippines. I I yeah, one and, and I, Africa. Yo, Freetown. You ever go to Freetown? Say it was Fungo, bro. He got the whole. Uh, thing. I actually, like, yeah, I actually, I don't talk to him outside of the rooms. I don't know if I'd uh, feel comfortable saying, so "Hey, cool can I go to your place?" Oh, uh, I'll meet y'all up. We'll we'll get on a Zoom uh, chat, <laughs> and then I'll be like, "Yo, she wants to see Africa." Somebody told me, like, I gotta Maybe. like, you know how people give you a word sometimes about your life? They'll give you like a. a you know, a gift of prophecy or something, and they'll okay. tell you something about your yeah. future. Somebody a long time ago told me I'm going to be going to Africa. Oh, that could be in your future. You do have it hasn't. It Africa has not now. happened yet. When they told me that, I'm like, how in the hell am I going to get over there? Yeah, right. Like that's a fucking plane yeah. ticket and a half. But uh, <laughs> yeah, who knows? Who knows? Maybe, okay. maybe, maybe. Who knows? We don't um, know. If you meet up with Spongo, definitely. I don't know if you've I ever think, met this young I man. Think, he yeah, is he, so I've cool, been man. in like, so many poetry rooms with him. Yeah, he's so cool, man. And he's like young. He's like 24. He's like, he's like, like the room. Black he Lantern flies carrier. Flies to Italy. And he's in the, <laughs> yeah, he's the young. Yeah, he's, he's the like black the young version Lantern Carrier. of Lantern Carrier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Much younger, though. A little, a little yes. Lantern Carrier. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's I love that man. Dude. Uh I chat with they him. They have the same kind too. of feel, the vibe. Yeah. And then even better than that, dude, like not to judge anybody, but like even like deeper, like I don't know. I, I respect this artist so much. And I know he's been really busy, but I'm hoping that he could feature like near my birthday or for my birthday. I'm gonna holler at him about it. Zomkanto. Isn't that who we were just talking about? No, I was talking about Sfango. Oh, oh. I'm not sure which one of them. 
so. you're thinking now that I think about what how your response is to that, you were thinking about Zamkanto. Yes, that's who I thought we were talking about. Yeah, no, no, I was talking about Sfango. Their names are so well, similar. I know one yeah. begins with an S and the other one begins with a Z. But um uh yeah, like yeah, Zamkanto is so dope. Yeah, he's the one that like, talks about his son all the time. Yeah. And his mom yeah, that's... and the way he talks about his ancestry and yeah. she's like Bruce, like using he lives in Canada. He's a he Canadian does? eight. Yeah, he's a Canadian eight. He's like an hour or two, like a couple hours away from us. Are you kidding me? No. He was in Toronto wow. a lot. That's why he hasn't been to Open Minds in a while. He's been uh, touring around. He recorded. He did something for like Black History Month, like a nice, like, you know, like a high production little poetry reading for Black History Month. Like, How's to is Toronto near you? Um, no, nah, Toronto's East Coast. We're like above, you know, saying we're, we're mountain time, so we're like on just on the East Coast of the Rockies. Like, I can see the Rockies from my house, and we're on the East Coast of the Rockies. I'm probably going to when I when I the venture to Canada, yeah. I'm probably going to drive. And where are you driving from exactly? I'm not Jersey. sure. Like where the closest city is in Canada. Is it Niagara? Oh, yeah. Go up there, I guess. But if you want to have a real adventure, we'll meet up halfway somewhere and fucking have a good time. We should meet in Arizona. Fuck Canada. You should see Arizona. The Crystal Forest. Have you ever seen or heard of this place? I have been to the Grand Canyon. No, no, no. In Arizona, the Crystal Forest. I don't know anything about it. What is that? Oh, my God, dude. So we found this place on the way through America. Someone told me about it, but I didn't understand, like, what it actually meant until I fucking seen it for myself. And it's basically thousands of acres of million-year-old petrified crystallized trees like when they cut them in half you could see like hundreds of thousands of years of crystallizations in different layers with different min minerals whatever was in the atmosphere like fossilized these trees and it's an entire forest i'm trying to pull it up here are they just old is that why they're crystallized yeah, they're so old that they're like fossilized, but they they like crystallized, right? Like, let's see if I can. Oh, here we go. All right, I'm gonna share your screen with you real quick. Let me know if you can see it. Can you see see this on the screen? Oh wait, no, it's loading this up. Hold on. I can see a whole bunch of little pictures. Yeah, okay, so each one of these pictures is is a tree. Right. That one's not looking too well, but if you notice, these trees are straight crystals, like blue, yellow, gold, like crazy colors, crazy rain compactation, like it's an entire forest of these. Like they're not fossilized they're crystallized so the amount of mineral buildup and how long those trees have been standing there in that arid desert for the mineral deposits to build up on that like here's a close-up of one of the crystals look at that thing that's a tree can you see that yeah that's a fucking tree dude like how long has that tree been sitting there for? And what has it seen? Like, look at all the different colors and layers of just, it's not even, it's beyond fossilized. It's like crystallized, dude. Like, and, and look at some of these, look at this shit's almost as tall as this fucking chick. It's a whole mountain side. And like, as far as your eye can see, there was like six different, like little, like pop up tones. Like, oh, we got crystallized trees for sale. Burr, burr, burr. Like, it's insane, dude. It's just. Like, look at that. That's so beautiful. That's a tree. 
It's like 30 million years old, probably. Like, how long does it take to make those crystals, dude? That's not fossilized. That's crystallized. It's probably one of the oldest forests on the planet Earth. The energy. Something just happened to the screen, like where it split. Um, and I can't. It, you're not uh, like this. You're the speaker, but I can also see your wife now. Uh, and I can't figure out how to get it back to the where it was before, where I could well, see I what you're trying to show me. Yeah, hold on. Here, hold on. No, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna just gonna start the share screen again and see if it pops up first. Okay, now I can see it. Oh, wait a minute. It just disappeared. Now I'm looking at your desktop. Wait, okay, there, there it is. I see it now. You see now? So did they cut these trees down or? They're falling down, like, or some of them are still standing, yeah, and they knocked them down, but some of them are falling over, too, like, like, look at that, like, every fucking layer of this thing has been crystallized, and it's not, like, a hundred trees, two hundred trees, or whatever, it's, like, an entire forest in a desert that's just, like, they had, like, stores selling it on the side, like, it's, like, it must have been hundreds of miles. And look at the detail in these crystals. Like, holy fuck. Like, fuck, that's so dope. Like, how long does it take for a tree to do that? Do they have a theory about how this happened? Uh, yeah, it's just it's it's fossilization turned to crystallization based on the thing. So these trees have been in an arid desert. Like once it it was a, a lush jungle that then turned to arid desert, which is in uh, it's in Arizona, right? So it it was a once a lush forest. Like even look at the mountains and, or these are the rings. But like uh, yeah, basically they all just dried up and stayed there for so long that instead of being petrified they became crystallized maybe from the salt oh from every mineral that the wind brought in every time they got blessed with a little bit of wind it would lay some sort of particle of some material down on its skin and inside and absorb and the late triassic period so dinosaurs used to roam around these trees 200 million years They were buried under layers of sand and turned into quartz crystal after 200 million years. Oh, they're so dope, dude. So like Semi-tropical forest, yeah, like BC. Or I like the Grand like Canyon. Is it near there? Uh, we went to the Grand Canyon. It's close to it. It's it's pretty. It's not that far actually from. That's it. it was only a couple hour drives. We passed it. Oh, we were past the Grand Canyon when we got here. Look at that thing, though. Look, like, look at that little chunk of tree. It's really beautiful. That's really beautiful. Like, it's beyond petrified. It's crystallized. Those are all different types of crystal minerals that are running through it, and it depends on, like... I like the colors. Yeah. I would frame that and put that on my wall. Right? So, we want to go there camp in the middle of all these trees sit on them hug them love them smoke some dmt and look at the stars you know just looking at the stars is like amazing over there because there's really nothing at the preventing you from seeing the full expanse of the like yeah there's globe. No city of lights yeah you've got so, you've got so yeah, much sky no city lights in this yeah. forest out by you, you have a lot of sky, or you oh, have. You're the first one of the first nights I was here. Uh, I walked out front. I had all the lights off, all the lights on my house, uh, my street were off, in my neighborhood, and I walked across the street and I stood up against the fence and I looked up. And I grew up in South Florida, so I know of 22 stars. I could point out right where they're at. That's a planet. 
you know that's a planet that star is 22 different stars and and four to seven planets however many were out at the time right i came here and i was like holy shit this is what they what i've seen in shows and in pictures and like for the first time i got to look up and see the night sky we had the northern lights above us the other night oh I asked, shit dude i asked it was fucked up too because i was like you know like i don't i don't got my pr yet i can't work i don't got my work visa like we're fucking broke dude like we're I'm like man fuck this shit dude if if y'all don't fucking show me a sign let me know that i'm on the right path and like things going okay like if y'all don't show me a sign like i'm fucking done dude like and then like an hour later the northern lights were above us and we were laying in the living room watching these wispy fucking white clouds we got videos i think she got it yeah i think she got a picture of them behind me just standing and we got videos of them dancing and stuff it was it was like i was controlling them too at one point we were like It was so cool. We were directly it. below it. But they I were white. I, they didn't look. I could see the green on the edges. Well, they were green in the fucking camera. But to my eyes, they just looked like wispy white clouds that were dancing around with the. Yeah. I might, my eyes might not be the best, you know. I'm not as they're, I'm not, they're not as a 12 year old me fucking. <laughs> perfect 2020 vision seeing crocodiles under the swamps I ain't fucking hey listen no i'm gonna get going the world, the world, man. i don't think i want to stay up all night long tonight even oh yeah though, it's 116 if I want... perfect that, yeah no this is perfect time to get going i think number, 116 all right cool we love you all right thanks for you know having the space and yeah. i will see you next time or before right. that if i see you in another place peace yeah oh look in the chat for the Peace, uh thing i sent i sent the relevant church uh, oh yeah i got it yeah i just opened it now yep i just okay. opened it up all right cool. and then there's the all live right. link Peace, you can click on sunday morning i'll talk to you later awesome all right okay bye, bye. Good night. good night